from the banks of Dewey Lake, it's the Dewey Pod Monster. Welcome back. My name is John, and this is the Dewey Pod Monster Podcast. This is your weekly podcast about... This week will be about horror movies again and other stuff, but we're mostly about consumption. With me this week is the host of the Dewey Pod Monster Podcast. His name is Sean. He wants to know about how birds sleep, and he also hates insurance. Sean, how are you doing today? I still hate insurance. I sure do. I Have surely you learned about do. How birds sleep? Not really. People don't answer those. People don't answer the questions. So I've been what John may be speaking upon. I think this is what he's speaking upon. So instead of doing the beer reviews now, we're doing beer news because I can't drink, but I still want to stay involved in the community. And I wanted to bring a random question because sometimes I just have a question about things and I didn't want to do any research. I mean, I could easily look it up on Google, but I asked the question of the viewers, hey, just random question of the week. How do birds sleep? And nobody watched. I don't think anybody watched far enough to hear the question. And one guy, actually, he's a loaded dice patron, Greg. Feltner, I think his name is, he he's like, oh, well, it depends on if they're nesting or like uh, binaural or whatever. And I'm like, well, tell me both ways, you know, don't 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 lead me on. I mean, does it matter? This is more bird talk than I expected out of a beer or consumption podcast, but I, I, I'm here for it. So, you know what I'm happy about? I am happy that. OK, I love horror movies, but I'm I'm happy that we are almost done with horror ween podcasting i can actually agree with that not that i'm gonna stop watching horror movies through october so for behind the scenes we're recording this on october 3rd we're trying to get ahead a little bit on this and doing some homework i guess but trying to watch it like cram this many horror movie episodes into we've probably been going hard on these for about a month now it feels like homework more than it should it's at least been a month if we started in september we probably should have thought that out a little bit a little bit better yeah, maybe. Well, thinking isn't always our strong suit, so. You mentioned that you wanted to rant about insurance, though, so here's your floor. Go ahead and do your insurance rant. Yeah, I don't know if I really want to. I'm just so tired. I am I am tired. <laughs> I'm just so tired of it. Like, I have insurance. I am a 40-plus-year-old man. I have been paying for insurance for over 25 years, like full insurance. I've had a full-time job since I've been, like, 20-something, 23. I pay for insurance. I have this surgery scheduled for this pile of dog shit that is connected to my body that I call a spine, right? I got the thing. My doctor takes my insurance. The hospital I'm going to takes my insurance, but it's not like the right kind of hospital, so they won't take the insurance. So I have to pay for it out of pocket. It's like a $65,000 surgery. If I don't want to pay for it myself, I have to go to another doctor. I have to get another surgery scheduled. I have to go to another hospital just so I can get this done. And the thing is, my mom is 70, 70 shit. How old is she? She's Four. almost like, no, she's, well, no, even older. Okay. I think I was just she guessing. was 30, 32 when I was born. She's going to be set. She's 77 years old. My mom had surgery today on her back. She found out like a month ago that she needed the surgery. She's already had her surgery and it's done. I've known this for two years and I have to keep jumping through these hoops. I'm half, I'm almost half. Well, I'm not half her age. But I'm a young man, you know, I've got a lot of life left to live. Why do I have to wait for two years to get this surgery? And a senior citizen, love my mom, right? I don't want anything bad to happen to her. Sure. But why, why does a senior get priority over someone who has their productive... I'm a taxpayer. I've got taxes to pay. I've got more insurance to pay. Why wouldn't you want me to have this this surgery so I can pay you more money in the long run? That's my rant. Rant, rant over. I'm just kind of tired of it. Lights at the end of the tunnel, the carrot keeps, the, the, the stick becomes longer and longer. The carrot gets further and further away when it should be getting closer. So that's my spiel. Universal health care. I don't really have anything to add to that. It's bullshit. And this country's like whole medical payment system or lack thereof is just fucking stupid. So watch anything yeah. good this week? <laughs> Still on Cobra Kai. So we, we. Okay little behind the scenes pulling back the curtain i'm sure a lot of people know this we don't haven't been recording these in order right we've been all over the map so you're going to hear an episode probably two weeks or three weeks after this where 
We talk about Cobra Kai and kind of get into it. Long story short, I'm in the fifth season. I'm about, I think I'm episode four or five. And I went back okay. and I was editing one of the podcasts that we recorded before. And we were talking about Cobra Kai and I had just started watching it. And you were about this far into the series when you were starting to have your kind of issues. You, were, you weren't, yeah, you weren't in love with it as much as you had been. And mm -hmm. I can kind of, I'm on your wavelength. I'm, I'm trying to finish it so we can have maybe after Halloween. Horror Weekend, Horrorween. Once Horrorween is over, maybe we can have a episode about Cobra Kai because it's fresh enough in my mind that I remember most of it, and I'm sure that you can kind of easily go back to it. But that's really I'm not going to rewatch the whole thing. But I, yeah. I think it would be enough to if you brought something up. I, I would imagine it would jog my memory enough to be able to talk about it. We could have a Cobra Kai episode. I mean, I think we have enough enough data between the two of us. But yeah, I mean, that's really I've been so involved in watching Cobra Kai that I really haven't been able to watch a whole lot more than that. That's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, oh, no. in contrast, like because I spent almost all weekend at a brewery helping out with their Oktoberfest. Aside from when I watched our topic for today, the only other thing I did, I didn't want to think at any point this week. It's been kind of a long like work week, too, so that doesn't help. You know, how sometimes you have just like a not necessarily a bad day, but just busy enough that you get home and you're just like, fuck everything. It's been a lot of those days just because, you know, shit happens. Right. Um, Stuff. Life. Right. Yeah. Work. That's why they, they hire us for these things, I guess. So most of my week when I haven't been dealing with our topic was just like rewatching Seinfeld and Bob's Burgers and things like that. that I don't really have to think about and just kind of <laughs> mindlessly chuckle at, you know. When you say that you've been deal dealing with the topic, it almost sounds like you're talking like we're going to be talking. This is a home improvement podcast or something. Not home improvement, Tim Taylor. But I mean, like DIY. How to fix a light switch. How to fix. Oh, you know what? My, the bane of my existence. Let's get into this just for a minute. Is closet doors. I cannot stand closet doors. If I could tear all the closet doors down, I would do it. You know, I, I know you've been to my house a handful of times, but you haven't gone into any of the bedrooms because why would you yeah we have torn out all the closet doors in all of our bedrooms in this house that's like the devil's work if you need proof that hell is real just look at a closet door because that's going to fail on you at some point and it's going to oh, you're yeah. just going to want to tear it down so our reasoning for taking them out was more or less practical than that our older of the two dogs for some reason really enjoys sleeping in closets so rather than him trying to push the push the door out of the way we just took the doors off and put a little dog bed in the bottom of it, and he gets to go lay in there. And to be clear, I'm talking about bifold closet doors, not like the regular oh, yeah. closet doors. I've been looking for like closet door alternatives, and we have a really small pantry. It, it literally just has enough room for a, the closet door. You can't put mm -hmm. a barn door there. You know, we thought about a curtain, but that would look kind of tacky. We've been even talking about a, a roller blind. Like, that's how far down the rabbit hole we're trying to get to, like, put something up. Just so it's not when you when you walk in my garage door. The mm -hmm. pantry is the first thing you see. That closet door is the first thing you see. And these bifold doors are the metal ones. I don't know if they're steel or what they are, but they're heavy as hell. And right. those things are so, for how chintzy and garbage they are, they are so expensive. It doesn't make any yeah. sense. You should go with some hippie beads, like, you know, straight oh. down. Yeah. Just light yeah. some incense from behind it. But I'm sure that's not a fire hazard. And yeah. Inside the pantry, Still. light some incense. Good. Yeah. Hippie beads. You know, this is a good 70s parenting, like, come to life. And that's Something been like a DIY home improvement corner. Uh, pretty good at that. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. It's very close to my Scooby Doo. Yeah. I don't know. That I don't have a whole lot to add as far as like other shit though. Like I said, I hadn't gone to too much. Did have a good time pouring through a drafting table all weekend. So if you did come out and see me, you didn't say anything. So that's kind of moot. But it was it's always a good time to get out there. They do one of the better Oktoberfest and if you like beer and you're in Michigan, we haven't done an episode about drafting table yet. We'll, we'll have to, even if you can't drink, we'll have to find a way to do that at some point. But they are, in my opinion, the most must stop of must stop breweries in the state. And I might be biased, but I don't care. I still feel that I feel that they live up to that opinion. You know, I know this little YouTube channel, this guy that runs one about Michigan beer. It's crazy. But I think they did a video about drafting table and it being a mandatory that. Michigan brewery. I, I do like videos with alliteration that usually makes it more clickable. Mm -hmm. So I agree. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's easy to remember. Rolls off the tongue. See if we can dig that up and maybe throw that into the, the show notes for this episode. Might be a good ad in there. But we do have a topic this week, so we might as well get to that while we're you know talking about closet doors, insurance, and beer festivals that you didn't go to. Getting back on to the topic at hand of horror movies, this week we are talking about the 2006 title Slither, which is James Gunn's first non-trauma full-length movie. It is currently sitting at number 2,511 out of question mark on IMDb. We don't, we still don't know how many that goes to. It's actually up 70 spots. Not quite sure how that happened. Don't really care. Do you want to go through the synopsis on this one? I don't have IMDb pulled up, so no, I'll let you do it. All right. I'm going to read the short one then because I didn't prepare. Motto of the show, I didn't prepare, which might become a reoccurring trend this week. A small town is taken over by an alien plague, turning residents into zombies and all forms of mutant monsters. That's it. <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, I'd agree yeah, with that. It's, it's pretty accurate. So where do we want to start with this? Let's start with the the easiest one. We've we've kind of touched on this movie several times throughout the course of this podcast. I know we we brought it up kind of heavily in the Night of the Creeps episode and I don't remember where we were talking about James Gunn before, but we kind of went on a little side quest about him for at one point. I think we both brought this up as a potential favorite James Gunn movie. Going back and watching this again, I can say without question that this is probably at the top of my James Gunn like film list. It takes all the like smoothed off edges that you have in his newer stuff between Disney and even Suicide Squad to an extent. And it's just kind of raw, it's kind of gritty, and it's James Gunn being allowed to be James Gunn, which works really well for the style of movie that he makes, the dialogue and storytelling that he does, and really just how this movie plays out from start to finish. Yeah, I feel like this is a perfect companion piece to Night of the Creeps, number one. I think the the kind of ideas that are told in Night of the Creeps are much better executed in this movie. This is, I could say, I mean, I like Guardians of the Galaxies, the Guardians of the Galaxies, multiple movies. I loved his Suicide Squad, but I would have to say that not only is this, I'm going to just going to TLDR, like Slither is probably one of my more favorite or most favorite recent horror movies. It's my favorite of James Gunn's movies. I just, there's so many ideas in this movie that I really enjoy you mentioned it in the synopsis where they're kind of zombies they're kind of mutants they're they're not really classifiable in that way they're more of like this alien threat they're kind just similar all... to similar to night of the creeps oh absolutely yeah i think those yeah. they're a little more zombie ish you know you the night of these the creeps. ones are or night of the creeps, night of the creeps. i mean they're zombie ish here that. but they're more of that mutant kind of like amorphous blobby it's like body horror a lot more body horror mm -hmm. in this movie than with Night of the Creeps. But like I said, it's one of my favorite, one of my favorite recent horror movies, James Gunn. I think this is his best work so far. And I think he's done a lot of good work. I mean, I, I, I would have to think pretty hard about a James Gunn movie that I don't like, but I'm not like a fanboy of him or anything. So it's kind of weird. But th this movie does so many things that I like. It really pushes itself to the top of the pile of all these kind of recent horror movies. I just like the comedy aspect of it, though. This this movie is classified as like a science fiction black comedy horror film. I mean, that's a lot of things in my wheelho wheelhouse that I like in a movie. So this one, I feel like this movie almost speaks to me. I agree with all that. Episode over. Yep. Okay. <laughs> hot dogs. No. Anyway, we'll we'll save hot dogs. I, everything no, you I'm just hungry. said is... is... <laughs> Everything you just said is absolutely spot on, including being hungry. I think the cast in this movie is awesome. What's great about this movie that you'll see a lot of familiar faces and some of them are like horror movie regulars that you'll see. But one of the people that really sticks out to me in this and is Greg Henry, who is if you watch a lot of action movies and stuff like that, he's kind of a every movie asshole that's in there. But he, you kind of love him because he's so good at playing just like a general prick. I have a hard time seeing past his character in Payback, but this is one because he's just such a prick in that movie, but he's so good at it. He's one of the few characters that stands out other than I'd say probably the main three characters being Michael Roker, who 
as far as I know, he's probably, I don't think he's in Suicide Squad. I was going to say, I think he's in every James Gunn movie, but I'm not sure he's in Suicide Squad now that I said that. Yeah, now we have to look it up. I feel like I have to look at this. Of course, you have Nathan Fillion playing the, the hero, essentially. And then you have Elizabeth Banks from Zack and Mary Make a Porno, because it took me 10 minutes of watching this movie. I'm like, what the hell movie was she in? I, I kept thinking she was in a couple Aptown movies, and she is. Mm -hmm. But it was Zack and Mary make a porno that that was stuck in my head. Past that, I mean, there's a lot of people in this movie that you're going to see if you're a James Gunn fan, fan that kind of make the rounds. You do see Rob Zombie and his voice makes an appearance. So that's that's disappointing. Of course, Lloyd Kaufman has an appearance in the movie. And anytime you can put Lloyd Kaufman in a movie, you should put Lloyd Kaufman in a movie. I'm sure that's a little bit of paying it back because Gunn has a little bit of a track record with trauma. But is there ever a bad time for Lloyd Kaufman to show up? And I was, you were so lucky. When you said Rob Zombie, I almost broke in with a, yep. I didn't want to interrupt you though, but Michael Rooker, he was in, he was in Suicide Squad. He played Savant. Okay. I don't remember who that is in that movie. I don't but either. I'll... Off the top of my head. <laughs> so... But he's in it. Okay. Fair enough. Who am I missing? What, what other cast members are worth notating here? Uh, well, we have James Gunn's wife at the time. Which one is What's she? What's her name? Jenna. Is his brother in this movie? I don't remember seeing him in this one either. I think he probably I like His is. brother's usually pretty funny when he pops up. Sean, I think is Sean. his name. Sean yep. Gunn. Sean Gunn. Sean Gunn. Yeah. What a good name. I mean, just the Sean part's pretty cool. Yeah, but then you add Gunn. It's like Tommy Gunn, but Sean. Yeah, we've already, I've already uh, given my my feelings on that conversation Tommy Gunn. once. Yeah, yeah. So it's... Which one's his wife again? I don't, yeah, I don't even remember. What's you just said from it. the office. What's her name? Jenna Fisher. Oh, Jenna yeah. Fisher's his wife. There's just little pieces of of things that we haven't really brought up. So Michael Rooker is probably the first big character you see. His name in this movie is genius. Do you know what his name is? Grant Grant. That's right. Grant motherfucking Grant. Who names their kid <laughs> the same? The first and the last name. I mean, two first names for a name is that's borderline. You got some. Yeah, you got the same name for both. So Grant Grant, his wife is Elizabeth Banks. Starla. He goes, yes, Starla. Nathan Fillion has a huge role in this movie. This is probably one of the few like starring roles where Nathan Fillion is top billing or one of the top billing actors. And that's what, you know, he kind of adds that bit of that snarkiness, that bit of a sarcastic humor kind of vibe. And so Grant Grant, Let's just give a little our little synopsis of the story or what happens in the movie. Grant Grant goes out because he's why does he why he does he what is he he's gets, not getting uh, any right he gets told what he's not getting any doesn't he get like turned yeah, down he try he tries to get some and she tells him no and he takes off for the night to go for a walk which loosely translates to I'm gonna go to the bar and try and to pick then, up abroad no he doesn't go to try to pick up abroad abroad tries to pick him up he's just oh, going true. to get drunk and you know drown away his sorrows the six cast member listed is xantha radley and her name her character's name is uptight mom <laughs> sorry <laughs> sidetrack because i found that funny anyway he goes to the bar to get trashed and another woman from i forget the, his relationship to her but somewhere from his past comes around and it's like hey you're looking good whatever let's get out of here and they go out into the woods She's going to try to, you know, jump his bones and he has a moment of clarity and decides that he's not going to cheat on his wife. But he finds this weird meteorite, meteorite slug vagina looking thing in the woods that yeah. he goes and pokes with a stick. Yeah. What do you do when you find something like that in the woods? You poke it with a you, stick, you, of course. Or you eat it. Stupid ass. Oh, yeah. Or, or you, you well, it. if it was white, you would right. eat it. <laughs> but this is. It's a, got a little, it looks like a little rat, rattlesnake, like a rattle, the, the tail. Right. And it's like shaking at him and he pokes at it with a stick. It whoosh, shoots in his chest. Very, well, night looks creeps, like they go in the mouth. Almost. Yeah, like a barb or something goes mm. into his chest and it starts to incubate inside of him, starts to eat his insides. He becomes, eventually becomes this kind of mutant xenomorph kind of disgusting body horror, goopy thing. I guess, like a little, I don't know, like a little, like a slug. He turns into like the human form of a slug, essentially. And when Starla sees him, she flips out. The cops are called. They come. Nathan Fillion is like an old flame of Starla's, right? Aren't they have some kind of 
previous relationship. It's a small town. I mean, it's like a, a small place. So everybody knows everybody. I don't remember if they go into what their relationship was or it was, if it was just a, hey, I like her and she might or might not like him, but she's with Grant Grant. So I, I don't know. But there's some kind of attraction there. Yeah. So Grant Grant escapes with his big, long, floppity arm. He escapes into the night to do his little metamorphosis. Well, you're, you're, getting, you're getting ahead of yourself. He, he escapes. What's well, after the cops get there? He's yeah, already he's, starting to transform, though. He's yeah, eating all no, the he meat. He goes home first. He goes. Well, home yeah, I know, first. but this is this, come on. This there's no, we don't we don't have a structure to this. We just That's fuck fine. up. Go ahead, the movie. hop the fuck around. Do do whatever okay. you want. <laughs> all right, I will. So he eats all the meat. He goes to the grocery store. He has his insatiable hunger for meat. He buys all the meat out of the meat case. He's eating it, getting all crazy as you do. He's getting the meat sweats and. uh all right, so the cops come because there she sees. Oh, Grant, you're all screwed up looking. Call the cops. Your turn. Tell us. <laughs> I love how I'm getting so aggressive about this, like this movie. <laughs> it's that all that insurance and closet talk got me all fired up. So in the interim, with that, he also starts eating the neighborhood dogs. There's a pretty. Uh, actually, it comes around the time that the cops when he comes back and he starts. You know, having this protruding, well, it's very trauma looking, this like two phallic looking thing come out of his chest and he can't bring himself to kill his wife. So he goes and impregnates, I guess, his old flame in the most, that's a pretty gross scene, but this is about where, where, yeah, you start really seeing him kind of transform. What I thought was funny and what I had brought this up to you when I was watching it what he really looks like, and this movie came out in 2006, I looked it up as a reference point. He starts looking like the characters that were the Flood in the Halo games. Oh, the yeah. way he moves, the way his, like, you know, appendages get all floppy and weird. We kind of throw shit around. And even to an extent, the way the, like, when the slugs start coming out of him, it... I, I can't say that he... I'm, I'm certainly not saying that he stole the idea from Halo, but I'd be shocked if he wasn't a little inspired by the look of these creatures from that game. I don't know. It reminds me of like society or something. Have you ever seen that where the, the people are like the they belong to the country club and the kid goes and the people are like absorbing each other and they just become these big blobs of creature. It's like an 80s movie. Maybe we should talk about that. I don't remember that, that one. Point. Yeah, it kind of. I, I don't remember that. Goopy Cronenberg like. Yeah ectoplasm drippy kind of disgusting <laughs> it's, it's a, a nice pretty picture, solid doesn't it? It, it does it actually cronenberg's a good it's it feels like cronenberg meets trauma yeah in a lot of ways yeah it's, um, a little, it's quite over the top yeah and it does have i mean one thing that you could say that's a little bit of a negative to this the cg effects in this the computer effects are very dated looking at this mm -hmm. point now the practical effects are on par with anything that came out in this era of film, let alone horror film. But when you see something kind of happening in CG, you're, you're very aware of the fact that there's something happening. That's computer generated. It looks very animated. Michael Rooker always has the same scowl, even when at the end of the movie, when he's like a big, like he Blob. looks like a melted. Yeah. He looks like a melted version of job of the hut with half the people that job of the hut has around him somehow absorbed into him. He's still got this like weird, like snaggle tooth sneer on his face as he's doing that. So well, what happens is all these people that are all these things and people that start to transform into these mutants, they want to be a, they want to be together. They want to be a part of grant because the thing that to kind of jump out of the story a little bit, the thing that I, I think is my favorite part that my favorite kind of, I don't know if it's a plot point, but my favorite part of the monster that grant becomes and the thing that I find to be like one of the most horrifying things about a, a villain in a movie or an, a threat, you know, like this horror threat is the hive mind aspect where they all, if you're unfamiliar with the, the concept, I know that you're not, but if the audience is un, uh, unfamiliar with the concept, it's like they all share the same vision. They share the same mind. So when one thing notice, when, when one of them notices something, they instantly all know they're all able to zero in so if there's a threat if there's someone that's threatening them they can and they see that person they can all converge on this one thing and the the attraction is so strong that they want to all join into into grant so that they can become this bigger threat this bigger monster and 
we kind of touched on it. You touched on it a little bit earlier. Brenda, the woman that Grant meets in the bar, he impregnates her. Well, they, a little bit later on in the movie, they find her in this barn. She's like occupying the entire barn. And that was like one of the scenes, it's in the trailer, where she's like, I'm just so hungry. And that was like freaky to me when, when it wasn't, when this was originally being marketed, I can remember it not so much the comedy aspects of it. It was kind of marketed mm-hmm. as more of a hardcore. It was marketed as a horror movie. Yeah, for horror sure. Movie. And I think that's, the, I'll just get it out of the way. This movie was budgeted at 15 million. And I think it made like 12 million in its theater run. So it was a big time flop. But I think the reason being is they, much like Night of the Creeps has that kind of co- comedic element, much like how we talked about Child's Play recently, that has that kind of comedy element there in Shaun of the Dead. You know, a lot of the movies that seem like they do a little bit better, they are those kind of hybrid comedy horror, in the horror genre at least. I mean, unless it's a slasher, no. generally, it feels like they have to have this co- comedy element to be successful, and they just didn't market it to that. Well, and... It makes it so much more approachable to people who don't just want to see like a Spider House movie. You know, if you can say, yes, this movie is horrifying and gross and terrible, but it's also funny. A lot more people are going to buy in just off of that. That barn scene, though, what's one of the things that's really great about this movie and why it really stacks up so highly, not just among James Gunn, but along this kind of movie, it does such a great job. I don't I didn't even notice it until the barn scene happens. It does such a great job of ratcheting up tension and pushing the plot forward in a really interesting way that once that barn scene happens and I mean, spoil where what they end up doing, this girl is just full of you actually don't even see the slugs as they are on the poster until you get to this scene. And she is just She's like the Willy Wonka kid, except not blue. She's filled <laughs> she's, with slugs. Instead. She's as literally as big as a barn. Right. And she essentially just splits. Like, you find out why the cops are in the barn, and she's being creepy and whatever, and she splits, and all of a sudden, the tension it, that's been ratcheting up, if you start this movie at a zero, and you're at, like, a five by the time you get to the barn scene, within a matter of two minutes, you're at, like, a... 15 and then it kind of comes right back down to like a 10 and it just coasts for the rest of the movie in like almost exciting fashion like it's i'm not going to go as far to say this movie's scary like i i almost think this movie is too well written from a comedic as- aspect to be considered scary it's gross it's got some horror elements in the effects side of it but as far as a plot and a storyline because of how the characters react how they're written and how it plays out I never really felt like scared of anything in this, but it's paced so well that it almost doesn't matter. It just fits in perfectly for this type of movie. I think the first time around that I saw this, it didn't scare me so much, but it was disturbing and it creeped me out. We talked about the Brenda scene where she bursts and all the slugs come out of her, but she doesn't necessarily just burst because she bursts for a couple different reasons. She bursts because she's so big and her skin is just stretched to the limit, but the slugs like eat her from the inside out. Right. And you can see her skin tearing and all these little, all this little shit like moving around inside of her. And when the slugs come out, all the search party that's been looking for Grant, been looking for Brenda, the, all the cops, Nathan Fillion, Starla, you know, all the, the, the posse that they've been able to round up of the few townspeople, they are flooded they're like swimming in these slugs and the slugs impregnate you basically, or take you over Mm -hmm. by going into your mouth and eating your brain, you know, a la night of the creeps. And this is kind of where one of the really great scenes and and it did kind of creep me out the, how good it looks. It is a CG effect, but it still looks for, for this time period for 2006, the CG in this specific scene where they kind of confront grant, they meet grant in the field. And there's that kind of like hillbilly guy, that that hick guy. I just like how he flips the cow over with his tentacle yeah, his tail or, tongue or whatever. Or whatever. I, I, what, whatever he does before you get to that, because I know where mm-hmm. you're going with this, but I want to give credit to this because it, it makes me laugh my ass off every time I see it. They catch up to Grant and they're watching him from like a distance behind a fence and they're kind of finding, you know, chaos and carnage at, as they're tracking Grant down. And Grant at this point is pretty much just like a pile of goo with tentacles and whatnot. 
and he's like eye to eye with the cow. He's like staring it down in this weird way. And he just straight up like, <laughs> I I don't remember now if he like just stabs it or either way, this cow gets like airborne very briefly and dragged off to get consumed. And it's the way it, I guess it'd be animated because I'm sure it's a CG effect. It just looks so ridiculous and so funny that it, it whatever happens after that is just gold. So, well, after that scene, the hillbilly dudes, one of them confronts him. And he's like, you're not going anywhere. And it, it's super quick. Grant just, he has a tail at this point. He's got the tentacles. He's the goop. He's like, you said, Jabba the Hutt is a perfect descriptor. He looks like a just disgusting, more disgusting Jabba the Hutt. He just quickly flicks his tail and the guy gets split from head oh, to yeah, right. his crotch. And just like he stands there for a second, his eyes kind of cross. And and then he just like his face opens up. His whole body just splits in half and all of his guts just fall out. His brain just everything falls out. It's a great it's it's a really. I don't know, for the movie, it's a really kind of iconic scene for this movie. And when I saw that the first time, when I saw it in 2006 or 2007 or whatever, we got it on DVD and watched it, it was like, oh my God, that looks, number one at the time, that looks so real. You know, it's kind of like mm -hmm. video games. The Genesis is out. Will graphics ever get any better than this? In 2006, the guy getting split open, all his shit falling out was like... Can a movie get any better than this? This looks amazing. This is like the coolest right. thing I've ever seen. We watched it over and over and over again. It was it was a, a showstopper as far as like scenes, you know, gore, just scenes in a horror movie. It was amazing. The other scene in this that we haven't brought up yet that is definitely iconic. And it's funny because it's iconic because it's clearly paying homage to Nightmare on Elm Street is the bathtub scene. Or at mm. least there's part of it that does because... So you mentioned the trailer, and this is the scene that I remember them using for the trailer because it, you know, has all these slugs and they're kind of crawling into the bathtub and blah, blah, blah. It doesn't really play out exactly like that in the movie. There's only like one or two in the bathroom to start with, but it goes straight for the Freddy Krueger bathtub scene shot and might even play out a little more brutal than how Freddy did it because that thing all right there. Yeah, I was just looking at something. Oh, sorry. You're all right. Sorry. You gonna start cursing me under your breath again? Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> no. God, I hope you leave that in. <laughs> I'll just put it underneath you talking. That would be fucking great. <laughs> anyway, where was it? Where was it? Okay, so you see the slug crawl into the bathtub. It starts creeping up on her in the same Freddy shot, and this thing just straight up gets right in her mouth and just fucks this girl up in a matter of like 20 seconds. And she manages to fight her way out of it, which is kind of good to see because you find out at that point that you can definitely fight your way out of these slugs getting in your mouth. Like you saw a bunch of people kind of, kind of not get them out of their mouth in the barn scene, but the way they leave that scene, you're, you're still in the moment of like, what the fuck did I just watch? And you're already on to this next scene. It's just, it's a really simple scene, but shot really well. It escalates really well. And then after she gets this slug out of her mouth, you find out pretty quickly that she's not out of trouble yet. And it just yeah. continues to ratchet back up. And Nathan Fillion comes and saves the day, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he does. And how the fuck did he get, like, he makes his way to town pretty quickly at that point, I guess. So. There's a there's like uh, there's scenes in this movie that I just vividly remember while I don't remember the exact quote at right now. It's that guy getting split scene, Brenda in the Brenda in the barn, the old like deputy who says that thing looks like my dick. <laughs> <laughs> the bathtub scene and the Greg Henry scene in the car where he has the cooler. Where is the Mr. Pibb? I told your secretary to pack Mr. Pibb. It's the only Coke I like. Goddamn Brenda's exploding like a water balloon. The worms driving my friends around like they're goddamn skin cars. People are spitting acid at me, turning you into kind of cheese. And now there's no fucking goddamn Mr. Pibb. Jesus Christ, Jack, let me get right on it. It's one of my, another, for me, like favorite scenes of this movie is, is Greg Henry just losing his shit about Mr. Pibb. Greg Henry losing his shit at the beginning of the movie in traffic is I, I have that conversation like three times a week with myself. 
So I think he's one of the he's I mean, there's a lot for me personally. There's a lot of highlights mm-hmm. in this movie. I mean, I'm not even going to wait for hot dogs. If you have not seen this movie and you have any kind of respect for my t- my taste in movies, you know, you've heard listen to us now. It's been over 30 episodes and you've kind of heard my side of things. You've heard John's side of things before we even get to hot dogs. And I know we probably have some more to talk about. This gets my highest recommendation for horror movies. Like if if what I talk about in movies or something that you think you enjoy, you have to see this if you haven't. And I'll leave it at that and we'll talk more about the movie. I just had to. I'm so excited about this movie. It's one of my favorites. This is a lot how I sounded when we talked about Scream. (laughs) (laughs) I hadn't seen that one either in a long time. So it was something that it was definitely worth going back and watching Scream. Well, we we got another one coming up in a week or two, depending on when we put this one up that I kind of get excited about, too. So anyway bathtubs how'd you feel about the car scene because i thought the, the car scene was executed pretty well when she gets out of the bathtub and her whole her whole family is fucked up yeah after yeah that whole thing that part is really very tense because she's got the two sisters right doesn't she have two little sisters her mom and her dad and they've all been turned they've all been taken over by the slugs by the alien threat and and she just has to escape this this whole kind of scene and it's really that girl is that Tan- tanya solner is that who that is sure I'm she's sure. like <laughs> she is a she's teenager. like yeah she's like 16 17 in this movie she, I, she's got to be older than that because you do see a little bit of nudity from her but it for this kind of movie it's pretty minimal considering that she's starts this whole like timeline in a bathtub like it's like a second clip i always got the impression she's like junior senior high school that type of age something like yeah. that Basically, what she ends up doing is she locks herself in her car. Like you were saying, her whole family has been turned into, we'll call them sluggos for the time being. (laughs) And they're straight up like talking with her and like having this really creepy conversation trying to get her to come out of the car. It's got little bits of vibes of Evil Dead with the whole like join us mentality. And I think that's where you really kind of start seeing the whole hide mind thing come in because don't they start using some of Grant's thoughts too? Yeah, and they're all completing each other's sentences, and yeah. it's just a f- creepy, freaky kind of scene. Yeah, and then, yeah, Nathan Villian shows up and saves the day. Kind of s- bumbles and stumbles over a fence, and doesn't he shoot like one of them or something? Yeah, I think he he headshots somebody. And they can be taken out. I think that does actually take them out, is is because the brain is what's controlling them. But then the sl- I think the slug, it evacuates the body once that's done. Yeah, and once it does, it can still grab another host if it it can and this is all grant's like big motivation besides growing and getting bigger is to reunite with starla he wants starla to love him even though he looks like this disgusting disgustoid like he still has the motivation to win his wife back so it's (laughs) it's uh, maybe is this a love story I, i don't really know i'm sure that he eventually wants to is it like a king kong situation where he's gonna like you know, King Kong's this big beast and he just wants whatever the lady's name is in King Kong. If Is that even what King Kong's about? I don't know. But I don't know if he really does. Have he you ever, not I, seen. Wait, wait, have you not seen King Kong? Not the whole thing. I mean, I know the gist of it. It's disappointing. It's you haven't seen ape. King Kong. You I haven't seen Jaws. Nope. Haven't seen Armageddon. No, that's fine. I haven't seen. I'm not, uh, not going to make you rock. watch Armageddon. I've never seen The Rock. Yeah, I'm not going to make you watch Armageddon. The other three we might have, we'll probably have to get to at least two of them. I mean, I've seen Slither. What else do I need to see? Jaws and The Rock. Yeah, I've seen Slither. It's better. Better than those two movies. Uh, It's better than The Rock. Probably argue with you about Jaws, but (laughs) anyway. So we got, so King Kong. Oh, Grant (laughs) Grant. (laughs) Grant's actually one of the, the... biggest saving graces of what keeps the story so interesting because his character although he's this mutant sluggy tentacle like sex machine in this movie essentially he still is a character that has a heart he still has i guess feelings or motivation non-nefarious motivation for his wife through this whole movie Mm -hmm. all the way up until the very end when you know they kind of figure out how to fuck him up but he's still like Throughout this movie, as he's going through, yeah, like you said, this whole transformation of all kinds of different different stages of fuckery, he's still going back and trying to 
do the right thing. And they have numerous scenes in this where Charlotte comes up and kind of can like talk him out of murder fucking everything and for like a minute. And then some hillbilly shows up and fires a pot <laughs> shot at him. And, you know, just kind of sets it all off all over again. <laughs> Is that accurate? Yeah. No, I think that's a that's a, a very accurate description. This movie kind of climaxes kind of right back where it started at it's at Grant Grant's house, right? That's that is the house where they end this. So I believe so. Yeah. I mean, realistically, the ending of this movie is kind of unclimatic. I do like the Nathan Fillion hand grenade because that does not go as planned. Yeah. I don't really remember exactly where he gets the hand grenade. But what's funny about it is it's kind of very true to life in that I think if 90 percent of people try to use a hand grenade, this is probably more of how it would turn out. <laughs> Yeah, um, it's not like it is in the movies. Not not quite as easy, but it also something kind of he, he gets it kind of jarred loose a little bit, too. I still feel like this is more likely to be how it would turn out if most of us use like I, I just imagine like I would be the guy that pulls a pin and goes pulls his arm back to throw and let's go. And then it's yeah. back there or something <laughs> right yeah. behind you where you can't find it, though. Oh, no. Yeah. It's like when you lose a screw or a bolt or something, you're like, I'm never uh, finding that. Yeah. Well, you'll find it, but you'll find it, you know, when you're walking around barefoot or something. As it explodes. Oh, we're, I thought we were talking about grenades. Oh, yeah, that too. Uh, <laughs> movie kind of ends fairly unclimatically, but it, it, it it's a means to an end. I mean, the short version is they blow up Grant and... It goes out with a bang. We've kind of waxed around this... I don't have a whole ton to add. I mean, do you want to get to hot dogs? I got a feeling you're going to redefine the hot dog scale on this one. No, I'm not going to go. I, I'm very rules oriented, but I'm ready for hot dogs. But I think you should Take go us first. Off. No, I think you should go first okay. with hot dogs. All right. So, again, for me, I, I do think this is pretty high up there, if not my favorite gun movie by far. Like it's It's just so well done. It's entertaining. It's... I don't want to go call it stupid because it's it's not necessarily stupid, but it's dumb entertainment in a, in the best way possible. For me, it's I know it, you've watched this quite a bit more than I have, but it's been a, quite a few years since I watched this, so it was kind of nice to get refreshed on it. It's just a good time. I I'd, I'd probably give this eight hot dogs out of ten sluggo buns, something like that. I'd recommend it pretty strongly for pretty much anyone who's fine with like a good old fashioned gross out movie, like see something weird, like to have a little bit of humor with it. And if you like people like, you know, Michael Rooker or Nathan Fillion or Greg Henry, there's absolutely no reason why you wouldn't like this movie. For me, I would give this probably, I, there's no such thing as a perfect movie, but I, for me, like I said earlier, and I've said it a couple times now, this is probably my favorite more recent horror movie i would give this mm, i'm gonna say nine hot dogs out of 10 mr pibs 11 mr pibs geez i almost flubbed my own scale uh i just it has a really like i said earlier it has that it has the black comedy horror sci-fi those are three things if you can fit three things like that in a movie you'll generally find me watching it i really enjoyed night of the creeps it kind of refines that formula of Night of the Creeps even more. It, it's obviously, you know, heavily inspired by Night of the Creeps down to the monsters. A little bit different with the actual like hive mind kind of concept. That's, again, one of my favorite kind of concepts in a horror movie. I find that to be something that you can't escape being like, a you know, really just kind of not really terrifying, but a really ominous thought. If you are into horror comedies, if you're into sci-fi horror movies and you have that extra, the comedy is really heavy. It, it adds that moment of like levity to everything. It doesn't, it's never too serious, but it, it does. Like I said, the first couple times or maybe the first time I saw it, I was disturbed by some of the scenes and it still kind of is. I think for 2006, the effects are pretty well done. They're not great by today's standards, but for the time, they're generally pretty good. If you can look past that and and not mind that not everybody has a cell phone to call somebody with, uh, I think that if you're into the genre, if, like I said earlier, if, if if you've listened to these 30 plus episodes so far and you've kind of found yourself on the same side of a lot of these movies that I have, then I think this is a, a must see. You know, 
we both brought up the the special effects in this, and I mentioned specifically that I could almost see that as a negative. You're absolutely right that the effects are good for the time when they came out. The problem is just kind of going back and looking at it and realizing that it's what shit is a eighteen year old movie now. Yeah, no, yeah, something like that. Math, not good at that. Sixteen. Close. Sixteen. Sixteen. <laughs> Eighteen. Sixteen. <laughs> whatever. It, no. The, the effects, I don't think, are going to be big enough to take anyone out of this movie. And you mentioned the cell phone thing. I'm just, just kind of sidetracked from the rest of this episode. When you watch any movie, like when cell phones aren't a factor, does that, even if it's set in like a, a modern time, does that take you out of the movie? Not really. I mean, as much as, you know, you and I, I don't know about you, but I look at my cell phone mm-hmm. all the time and I'm not even looking sure. at anything. I think about it a lot. Like, why am I looking at this? There's, what, am I going to yeah. read the, the headlines again? Like, I've already read those 10 times. I don't do anything fun on my phone. But it doesn't take me out of it. Like, I don't have to think, like, well, this is my favorite movie pre-cell phone. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's It generally doesn't. There can always come up with some trick as to why you can't use a phone. Well, I think the bigger thing is, do you want to be told a story or do you want to have a cell phone ruin it? You know, it's <laughs> kind of what it comes down to. I mean, I... I don't remember what the site is, and I'm not going to take the time to find it or link it because it's dumb. But it basically, for those who haven't listened to every episode, one of my favorite shows is Seinfeld. And this site basically disproves everything that happens on the show with the invention of the cell phone, which is totally accurate and also totally ruins the whole show. Like it, it's not worth thinking about. And I'm kind of perfectly fine with. You know, if I see a a movie or a show for that matter where someone picks up a phone and uses it because they have to make a phone call or fine. But whether it's a period piece that's set in the 40s, 70s, whatever, or if it's a movie that's set in 2022, 2020, whatever they want to make it. I never really think that having the cell phone there or not there impacts the story all that much. Even I mean, shit. Scream the the Scream Five has plenty of cell phones in. That's a movie that's or Scream Four for that matter. That's a movie that's based off phone calls to an extent. It never really feels like the cell phone is the defining factor of the movie to me. Cell phones, cell phones, totally unnecessary. Agreed. As we continue to purchase them and fill landfills of old ones, but hey, whatever. So, got anything else we want to add to this before we wrap this one? No, I just. I'm just so happy that we got a chance to talk about Slither before. What was I calling it? Hollow Hollow Horrorween, I think is what you called there it. There we go. So glad we got to talk about Slither before Horrorween was over. Well, we had to. It it was it was promised in the Night of the Creeps episode, so we had to. And yep. I'm not gonna deny you watching Slither. Why would I do that? That'd just be mean. Hey, that would be giving make putting you at a disadvantage not watching. That it would be. That's absolutely true. So, all right. Again, we're going to wrap this up. Look for this one. This one is, where is this available right now? It is on Peacock. That's where it's available right now. So if you have Peacock, you know, after you question yourself and realize that you have Peacock and say, why the hell do I have this? (laughs) This is why you have it, is to be able to watch Slither. There's another movie coming out in a couple weeks that you probably want to watch on there too. But until then, watch this. In the meantime, after you watch this or before or whenever, we would appreciate it if you gave us follows on all the social media stuff and interact with us. We are at Dewey Pod Monster. Check out our website that is up and running now. It's very psychedelic and called Crap.Town. That's right. Crap.Town takes you right there. You can go through all our old episodes, leave us feedback, leave us messages, whatever you want to do. I'm probably forgetting something, but Sean will remind you of that if I did. What do you got going on, Sean? Well, I'm taking a break from the beer reviews, but I'm doing Michigan Beer News. So if that interests you, if you didn't know that Bells got sold, check out my videos about Michigan Beer News. Put them up weekly. You can find that at youtube.drafttherapy.com. That'll take you directly to the YouTube channel. Barring that, if you don't care about Michigan Beer News and you want to hear me lament about how the Lions get the short end of the stick and they suck, you can follow me on all the social media at Draft Therapy. So there you go. Beer Nudes. And Lions commentary. Beer nudes. So. <laughs> <laughs> no nudes from me. Maybe somebody else. Hey, it's got to happen somewhere. We'll talk to you soon. We'll be back next week. I don't know. that We'll be back next week. We'll figure out what we're doing then. Have a good week. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.
Hopefully that was in sync. I don't know any in sync songs. I was gonna make a horrible joke. I'm not fucking with it anymore. I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> Should I'll just cr- I'll just leave curse you quietly whole, to myself. We'll just leave this when whole I... three minutes at the beginning of this episode because that's oh, yeah. what good podcasting is, right? Mm-hmm. No editing required. It's just stream of consciousness. It actually kind of amazes me that people try to do that, but I don't think it's that interesting of a conversation.